Lou. We will be having Responsive Prayer 1, page 282 in the Lutheran Service Book, for, uh, with the afternoon verses. So Responsive Prayer 1, page 282 in the Lutheran Service Book. Holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Hear my prayer, O Lord, let my cry come to you. Our psalm will be Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Transgression speaks to the wicked deep in his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flatters himself in his own eyes, and his iniquity cannot be found out and hated. The words of his mouth are trouble and deceit. He has ceased to act wisely and do good. He plots trouble while on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not reject evil. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like the great deep. Man and beast you save, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. And you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your righteousness to the upright of heart. Let not the foot of arrogance come upon me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. There the evil doers lie fallen, they are thrust down and able to rise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our text for meditation is the second half of John chapter 2. So, John chapter 2, beginning at the 13th verse. And the Jews' Passover was near at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found sitting in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers. And he made a scourge of small cords and drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables, and said to those who sold doves, Take these things away from here, and do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of your house has consumed me. 
Then the Jews said to him, What sign can you show to us, seeing that you do these things? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will rear it up again. Then the Jews said, This temple was forty-six years in building, and will you rear it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. As soon, therefore, as he was risen up again from death, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. When he was at Jerusalem at Passover in the feast, many believed on his name when they saw the miracles that he did. But Jesus did not put himself in their hands, because he knew all men and needed not that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A few things that I want to touch on here, and I'll do the last one first. So, uh, Jesus was at Jerusalem at the Passover feast. Now, this is important because John, the Gospel of John, actually helps us date the events of Jesus' ministry. Somewhat, anyways. So, if you read Matthew, Mark, or Luke, straight all the way through, you might assume that Jesus' ministry was one solid event that maybe took a a few months, considering all the logistics of him traveling around. Whereas in John, we have a record of three, of, of multiple independent Passover feasts, which mean that Jesus' ministry was at least three years, or two and a half to three years. So because of John marking these down, we actually know about how long the life of Christ was beyond um, age 30. Uh, Luke was the one who says that Jesus began his ministry around the age of 30. Now, for the second part that I want to get at is, will that should be the first. Uh, In the temple at this time, and not in the actual temple building, this would be the outer courts, there were uh, money changers and people who sold animals. Uh, These animals would be used in sacrifices at the altar inside the temple. So, for the Jews, this would seem like a one-stop shop uh, uh, for sacrifice and salvation. So, relatively convenient to have all this going on. Now, the issue that is brought up is that the outer courts of the temple, and if you've uh, seen pictures of the Holy Land or just the temple in general, maybe artist renderings, Uh, you can see that the actual temple itself is a small building within, on the Temple Mount, the Temple Mount being a rather large area. Uh, The outer court would be where non-Jews could go. They would not be able to go into the temple itself to actually be among the sacrifices. They could only be outside uh, in the the open court. Now, if you have the open court and people are exchanging money, you have a whole bunch of, of animals being brought in, well, that's going to be loud and you have the general sounds in the market. So how can you worship God properly or have the proper uh, understanding of worship when you're outside in the hustle and bustle of the market? This is the issue that Jesus is presenting, that this is supposed to be holy ground. Now, holy ground for, say, Moses uh, around the burning bush. Uh, Moses approaching the burning bush had to take off his shoes, had, uh, had to recognize that this was a, a place within, uh, within the presence of the Lord. So if you were sinful, if you were uh, degenerate in any way, you could actually be destroyed in the presence of God. So first you need to be cleansed before you had to come into the presence of God. Uh, Moses first received the word of God to come closer, and, and Moses did in supplication when he was supposed to do, taking off his sandals, approaching, uh, kneeling. So this is... Uh, so Moses was reverently approaching the Lord and there, but how reverent can you be if you're going about your, your money-making business in the holy ground? So Jesus, seeing this, seeing the disrespect to God the Father, seeing uh, the, disre- the violation of the first commandment, basically... He doesn't let out rage per se, uh, because rage would be a blind fury against all these people. No, uh, Jesus has 
what you might call a righteous anger, where he is understandably angered by something acting against God, and he is quite adamantly against what is there. And then this is why he takes the, uh, uh, the rope and, 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 and makes a whip, or uh, in this translation, a scourge. So he goes about uh, driving everybody out from the presence of the temple uh, because they are not supposed to be doing that there. They're supposed to leave the holy ground to be holy ground. It would be much like if up here in this chancel, which is dedicated in space to worship of our Lord, if we just started selling postcards of, of our church here, trying to make money to finance what we do here. That's not what this space is for. This space is for worship, and this should be recognized as worship space. So rather than confusing your daily bread with God himself, divide the two, have this be recognized as something for you to come to, uh, some place where you can come and go before your Lord and receive the forgiveness of sins, and go and receive your daily bread, that which you need to sustain yourself in this life. Go and earn that outside of this area. And this is also why you would find in many churches, uh, also I've been in a few uh, 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 monasteries, nunneries, that would have gift shops off at the side. And you can actually do that, yes, but if that starts to eclipse any sort of worship, then it needs to be removed. Because your priority has to be straight. You have to have, you have to approach God in faith first, and then everything else follows. That's why the first commandment is first. Now, in the spirit of understanding what the first commandment really is, uh, people go up to Jesus and they kind of go, Oh, you remind me of this, uh, this verse of the Psalms, The zeal of your house has consumed me. So going up to Jesus, they, he asked him, well, uh, why are you doing all these things? Can you give us a sign that we are doing these things? And Jesus answered and said to them, uh, destroy this temple, the temple that on which they are on. In three days, I will build it up again. So you will reconstruct the temple. Now, the Jews, understandably, are confused by this. As they figure that this is going to be the literal temple, this is going to be the building, and uh, they, they claim that this was 46 years in building. Now, now the specific temple that they're referring to is Herod's temple, uh, this being the third incarnation of the temple that is on this Temple Mount, and it did take a long time. And it is actually recognized as one of the most beautiful buildings of its day. So understandably, 46 years to construct this temple well, how can Jesus destroy it, uh, uh, destroy it and rebuild it? Well, John gives the little explanation that this is the temple of his body. So rather than, uh, so the Jews, rather than recognizing Jesus Christ as the temple, the one to whom all focus and faith should be directed towards, uh, they are dissociating uh, God and his word from the actual building. Uh, sorry, from, from the actual person of God. So they're recognizing the building rather than Jesus Christ. Now for John, uh, writing the gospel, uh, Jesus is the gospel. Like his actual person is the gospel. His actual works are, are, are the gospel. And everything is centered around Jesus Christ. And you'll find this to be true of many authors, but John really tries to hammer this home. Especially when you get into the book of Revelation, where the where in the heavenly temple uh, the, he the heavenly city there the temple is Jesus Christ in order to worship in the heavenly city in the kingdom to come and the new heavens and the new earth you worship Jesus Christ Jesus body is the temple and where he goes there is God so rather than focusing your worship towards this building, this space, uh, even this chancel region, and focusing on uh, an aspect, uh, something that we've devoted to God, 
Rather than focusing on the thing devoted to God, you focus on God himself. So even though we have something like this little manger scene with this plastic baby representing Jesus, if we're using this to help focus our worship, we should never be concerned with this plastic figure of Jesus and directing our prayers to this, but always recognizing first and foremost our God and praying to him. So Jesus Christ, uh, who is himself God, is outside of space and time, he is eternal, he is spirit, so we can worship him anywhere, any place, and he will be present with us through his word. Uh, Jesus Christ says himself that wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be among them. So we don't need to have space in that sense. However, Jesus Christ is also incarnate in the, in the body of a human being. So rather than a plastic baby like this, we have Jesus Christ as a real living and breathing human being who is going about pointing people to his flesh, the flesh that would bleed upon the cross and be offered for our sake for the forgiveness of sins. So Jesus Christ recognizes that even though God is spirit and we don't need to have any set location, set space for our worship, having the worship space is incredibly important, which is why Jesus drove people out from the presence of the temple, and also why uh, having something physical is so important. And this is why we have a lot of artwork here in this church. Um, this major scene, uh, Jesus Christ in wood on that cross. Uh, I don't think that there's too much else that the camera will pick up besides, say, um, uh, something like this frontal, which has the Cairo, uh, the two letters of, of Christ. So we, and we use all these things to help us in worship to recognize that Jesus Christ, rem remind us of what he did for us and go forward um, uh, in devotion and reflection on in Christ and his works. So in one sense, Jesus is very adamant, do not use these elements in place of God. And in the next sense, he's saying, but don't discount all these physical elements. They are very important uh, to you in your worship of me. So while we recognize Jesus as God, being without, uh, being spiritual, eternal, without, outside of space and time, he's also physical. He's also the, the man, Jesus Christ, who has a physical body in space and time, which we can direct our focus to in worship. So rather than uh, focusing on all the worldly elements which we fashion to try and remind us of Christ, focus first and foremost on the person of Christ, who we will meet face to face, literally face to face, in the flesh, when he comes down on the last day and brings us into the new heavens and the new earth. In summary, this portion of John is about the first commandment, recognizing that God comes first above even our daily needs and that we should always be focused to him. So recognizing our focus on God, we also recognize the person of Jesus Christ and direct our worship to the new temple, which is not just an abstract reality, but the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, which comes to us in word and sacrament here in the church. So, we should recognize the church as a place set aside for the sacred, set aside for the holy, because this is where Jesus Christ comes to us so that we may receive the forgiveness of our sins unto eternal life. Amen. We continue in prayer, uh, resuming on page 283. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, you came to us in the flesh so that we might see God. For when we look upon you, when we look upon you in flesh and blood, we see our God who is in heaven. Please, Lord, help us not to be distracted by all the things here on earth, all the worldly things that might take us away from our focus on you. But, Lord, always direct us toward your word and your sacrament, 
that we might receive the forgiveness of sins and be brought into your salvation. In your name we pray. Amen. Gracious Jesus, our Lord and our God, at this hour you bore our sins in your own body on the tree, so that we, being dead to sin, might live unto righteousness. Have mercy upon us now and at the hour of our death, and grant to us, your servants, that all others are, who devoutly remember your blessed passion, a holy and peaceful life in this world, and through your grace, eternal glory in the life to come, where, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.